Yeah, hello. Hey, Glenn. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm more like I'm on this trail. It's like a never-ending trail. Um, I've been reading all these. You're on the trail or a trial? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or yeah. both? Uh, I guess yeah, I guess you could say both. Um, hey, did you get my uh thing in the mail? No. Nope. Uh, I sent you uh. A money order. Uh, I'll be on the lookout for it. Uh, I sent it. I hope I sent it to the right place. So do I. <laughs> it said P.O. Box. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Um, seven seven four. Seven seven four. Uh, I think I had. Yeah, I think I wrote that down. But um, yeah. When I when I read, uh, I started reading uh morals and dogma. And I'm like doing like this one paragraph. You got that, you got that backwards, by the way. Dogma and moral. Ma dog. <laughs> <laughs> and morals. Yeah. And yeah. Almo. Oh. Aroma. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, I, I, one paragraph like <laughs> just leads me to like all these pages of just resource of like you know like when I went like the way like how he encodes stuff like he you know like the obvious stuff like he'll capitalize justice and wisdom and harmony and I know those words you know like when you look at the definition of, of like justice it's pretty interesting and um yeah I was reading the other article t- today I was trying to do a little bit of research it's called uh, you you were talking about the cities of a uh, refuge in the Bible. There's like six cities, I think mm-hmm. it was. And then you go into Henry Navarre, and I and I was re- reading like I read it like he had the uh, the Edict of Nantes, something it gave like I guess more like freedom for Catholics mm-hmm. to uh, worship. But and then you put Tony Glare's conversion, and I remember that yeah he converted to something and. He like, uh, but he still supported abortion, even though he converted to um, Catholicism. But um, but what did that have to do with Henry of Navarre? Was that like a present? Like, was he like doing what Navarre did in the past? Like, it was like a, uh, like a play or something. Or, or what was that? Va Ave. Ave. Virgin birth. Mhm. The new one, na n a means new one. Mhm. Vare, second new birth. Mm. Yeah, and then, in there he goes. Um, and then in there you you talk about uh. The second new birth, by the way. Uh huh. Mary Magdalene. Yeah. Jesus is the first. That is, born of a virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. He dies on the cross. The DNA is transported back to Mary. Mary becomes pregnant again. Mm -hmm. And the child is Mary Magdalene. Mm. Mary Magdalene is the symbol of a unicorn. Male on the inside, female on the outside. Carry a baby to term, creates a new line, a a genetic uh, descendancy line from Jesus. Yeah, with these not women. married to, but is Jesus. Oh, she, Jesus came back as you're saying as Mary Magdalene. Yeah, if you look at uh, Da Vinci's uh, Last Supper, Mm -hmm. two people are sitting at the front of the table. Mm -hmm. One's a man and one's a woman. They are linked at the hip. That's Jesus and Mary Magdalene. There was no suggestion 
that uh, at the Last Supper there was Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. But the very fact that Mary was there, the hint is in Jesus' genetics was the genetics needed to make Mary Magdalene. It's all a story invented by the Essenes. Yeah. You said that they helped write the Kabbalah too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. They're, they're they're basically the equivalent of uh, Jordanians. Mm-hmm. And and their origin is from India, Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, and in that article too, you you talked about. I guess this is when I guess when you're analyzing nature, you talk about. You said duck for albatross, and I looked up. That's like a I guess a species of some type of bird. Yeah, like a seagull. Yeah, yeah. I read a little bit on them. I seen. No, yeah, but um, were you trying to show me um, um, like how? Like we're we're evolution, or or are you trying to? An albatross is um, um, an allegory about a guy who kills a bird at sea, and as a penalty, he's made to carry it around with him. That's basically the same story as Cain and Abel that he kills, allegorically kills his brother Mm -hmm. and made to carry him. There's always a hint that Abel was different from Cain because he was gay. And they saw that allegory, I think, too, in Greek mythology. Um, One of them had to carry... A stone or something like that. I'm not sure which one exactly, but that that's a similar story. Like yeah. It's punishment. Yeah. You, hey, you, never, you... you never get rid of anything. Mm-hmm. It only changes in its form. Mm. Nothing ever dies. <laughs> People's body is shut down, but their DNA lives forever. Yeah, you said that when people die, like, and you go to the basalt area, and you said choices are made down there. But um, like, who makes those choices? What the the process of creation? Make Crea- creation is the origin of all things. Mm-hmm. Anything else is um, a derivative. I I call gods and creators uh, hijackers mm-hmm. uh, hijackers of creation you choose to follow the hijackers of creation for the purpose of instant gratification mm-hmm. you choose instead to follow creation because it is the origin of all things. Yeah, see, it's the origin, and and then they have the lower priests who hijack you know, reality. Yeah. Yeah, and then you you lost me. This one, this one, you said in this in the same article, you said Quaker Virgin Amazon rule the roost in Oxford Mills. Ontario, back of Esca. Like a bridge over t- troubled waters, I will lay me down under. And I know, I looked, I know this, that comes from a song from a Simon and Garfunkel, but I don't know, it's the Quaker of Virgin Amazon. So you're saying with the... An Amazon the, is what? It's, it's the allegory of, you know, the clan mother, right? Yeah. Mason. Oh, yeah. Amazon. Oh, yeah. Amazon. <laughs> Oh. A house. 
the house is female, the person inside is not. It tries to demonstrate that by cutting off a breast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I said that. And and in reality, um, there is an induced uh, disease put on these females, and that's breast cancer. So they, in fact, lose breasts. Uh, Yeah, look at women, too. Quakers are quackers. Mm -hmm. Quackers. Make noise like a duck. (laughs) Why do they yell duck? At this, by the same uh, reason in golf, the L4. Because ducks are hypocrites. You ever saw ducks? I had two here. Mm-hmm. And they, uh, they walk up to you and waddle slowly, and if you're not looking, they waddle and go behind you, and then they jump on you. (laughs) I've had more clothes torn by those two ducks than by all of the other animals combined. Why do they do that? Well, it's, it's their nature to be hypocrites, because... They they have no defenses, no normal defenses, so that is the defense that they use. It is basically the defense of the Neanderthaler. They have no physical ability to defend, but they can get you when you're not looking. <laughs> Pretty interesting. I I really gotta get on that farm. I, Cause I'm I'm seeing um <laughs> when I when I look at like, look at the animals and try to analyze them, and I see like I understand a little bit more. But I know it's gonna take. I put up with the ducks for mm-hmm. or at least four years, and and last winter or at the beginning of this winter after it got cold. I uh, decided that uh, there were too many cats uh, on the property for me to afford the feed Mm -hmm. so that I had to uh, begin by uh, cashing in some of the assets of the farm. The first two were the ducks. (laughs) (laughs) I I, uh, slaughtered them and fed them to the cats. Then I followed up with the turkeys. So it kept the price of feed down during the coldest part of the winter and allowed the cats to prosper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was having a conversation with um, you know, friends, uh, a couple of people yesterday. And some people see humanity like, oh, you know, we're just... Humans are just so cruel, and they just destroy everything. And animals are innocent, or whatever. And I, and I was like, what? Because, cause when you like, like, like one example of an animal that's, like, that's, that's, I don't know, like, the, I don't know why it's nature is like that. Like your cats, you ever notice when the cats, like, they'll play with a, a, a mouse just and kill it just for fun. Yeah. What? Why is it like that? Why? Uh, It's because it's genetically programmed. That's the reason why, but I don't think that's what you're asking. Um, We do that too. Depending on the circumstances. Yeah, I know, I know people. Uh. A, um, uh, A cat basically is attracted to uh, quick movements. And it 
probably has something to do with its senses. Cat can sense things much more than people can. Movement would be one of them. Sensory hairs of cats. And uh, they have the the same um, approach with birds. They can get a, a bird. It's because they're attracted to the quickness of the movement. If you want to attract uh, a cat, you put your finger down and scratch the ground or on the floor, and the cat will stop and, and watch. It has no, um, no need to kill the finger, but he acts in exactly the same way as he does with a mouse or a bird. And if you weren't attached to the finger, he'd jump it. <laughs> oh, they just, they just like to pounce there. Yeah. Oh. It's part of the training for hunting. Yeah. Because at one stage of the game, that's how they lived. Yeah. That's they why you have... survived a... on the food they found, not on the food people gave them. Took, it took a while uh, of domestication for them to start making decisions on where is the easiest food. But they don't lose that gene that attracts them to prey. It just becomes recessive. The same way that we probably use only 3% of our genetic material. The rest is recessive. And it goes back in time to the time all the way to the point where we were flatworms working our way through the ground yeah. and becoming eels and becoming alligators and Alligators have that same instinct, instinct for movement. Can't see, they can't hear many times, but they can sense movement. It's a worm going through the ground, couldn't see or hear. Yeah, yeah. But as something moved, the sand and earth would change places and the sounds of that would be captured by the hair. Yeah, and, and it's, it's easy to see that hair as a sensor, like, you know, when human beings get cold, your hair stands up it's like a yeah. type of sensor. Um, and you see, yeah, you see it on all the animals and the hair. When they're afraid. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, it's um, just, uh, it's it's the recessiveness of the program. As human beings, of course, we ha we are the most advanced of the species, supposedly, when it comes to the fact that we have a brain and and we have uh, intuition, mm -hmm. and we're supposed to be using both. Yeah, uh, but. Some work better than others <laughs> at that, and, and there are some that have absolutely not progressed, period, and they're psychopaths. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, because cause the, the people, the, like, so that's what psychopaths are who haven't progressed? Yeah. Think? They have no feelings of of community. They are just predators. Yeah, and they all can like sense each other out, and they know that you know they're different. They see that, and they and they just they always wow. And many have been bred. Yeah. Uh, on purpose. That was the purpose of prison colonies. Uh, the United States East Coast used to be 
uh, Europe's prison colony until they transferred it to Australia. I've heard, I've heard too, like that all human beings are potentially like a like. Yeah, so. well, we have the same basic structure, mm-hmm. and it's never been bred out. It's only been bred in. But that becomes recessive. It but goes further into the back of the subconscious. But it's always there. Because yeah. I see, with it's like pretty scary too. You think about like how they can turn, like you know, like with like psychopaths, like who join the military, like they don't have any problem killing or anything. But then they can turn somebody who's not psychopathic <laughs> to a killer. And yeah. off of brainwashing, but I've heard that like it breaks down eventually the uh, program. Yeah, what it does is go into the subconscious and brings out what is always there. Uh-huh. And I've heard you know there are, mm-hmm. the one one thing I always think about when we talk about civilization. Mm-hmm. Much of the things we are taught in a civilized world are untrue. Yeah. But they have a purpose for the controllers who want to control us. And the best example is the breast of a woman is a feeding station. But the priests have converted it to a sin. To, to look at breast because they say it's a secondary sex organ. Yeah. Well, it's not a secondary sex organ. It's a feeding station. But over time, they made us believe. And therefore, our parents pass that belief down to us. And, and we believe. Uh, that's interesting. You said that, like, with the subconscious mind. Like, do you think like Pro Magnon man was? Because they say, okay, like we were, we used more of our brain back then, and and I've read like how like it all that like I guess they call it like the primal how we were like I guess primal, and it all went into like it's in like the unconscious mind. And it manifests itself in, in, in dreams, with, from how we used to live. Because cause now when you look at the whole environment. You know, I guess it makes oh, that how we used to be like it's like recessive. Yeah, a, a dream mm-hmm. is is basically like a filing cabinet. Yeah. yeah. You're you're taking the events of today. Mm-hmm. And you're going into your filing cabinet, opening drawers to find the right place to put this event of today in. And as you open the drawer, you get flashbacks of what's in that drawer. Mm-hmm. And you put the event in the proper drawer. But along the way, you're basically being reminded of a lot of things that existed in the past and they come through as as the images of that time. Mm. You know, there there was a time when cannibalism was normal. Yeah, I, I bet. You know, how do you live uh, if if there's uh, no other food around? There's a book I, I ran across on Google came across I, 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 you, I don't know if you've read it's called Atlantis in the Kingdom of Neanderthals by a guy named Colin Wilson you ever heard of that book? I, I never heard the title per se I don't know if Wilson is another Wilson I know though uh, well you know in the book I don't know Like it might be an interesting book but it's pretty hard to believe that you know you can get something like that published. 
because it's all controlled by another set of priests, so and you know the whole publishing book industry. Yeah. And um, but it, it, speaking Every, of everything mm-hmm. is published once. <laughs> what happens to it after that is a different story. Some are uh, recessed, hidden in the libraries of the Vatican, for example. Yeah. And others are made for mass distribution. If it's true, it it's certain to be hidden. If it's false, it's certain to be promoted. I was, I, I, this is a movie I think you really should see. It was a really good movie with Sean Connery and Kristen Slater. It was called The Name of a Rose. Yeah. You seen it? Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, I was really surprised at how they, you know, they show you a lot of what went what on in the priesthood and how they had you know, access yeah, to knowledge. From, from one monastery to the other. Yeah. Copying books and things. Yeah, and, and they, one guy, like, Speak an older language, yeah. and they would use, and and they, and they show you the whole, you know. Like, the word you know, "rose" is basically uh, standard for the word "ruse." The name of the ruse. Right? Yeah. Oh. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm looking up, you know, all the stuff too that you you, you were like I I had to look into um. Place he says in France called La Rochelle. Yes, the rock. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, female and, rock. L E L L is female. Yeah. So. Yeah. And yeah, and oh yeah, back. But that that there's another article too. You said it was with the um. This had me. I'm still researching it. When you talked about Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa, the Venus de Milo, and the Wing Victory of Samoth race, and you said they would. They're basically all like hermaphrodites, you know. Yeah. They, they have a secret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and um, and he said each in its own symbolic, its own way symbolic of Alfred E. Newman. Now I know that you know new man, the new man. But the, yeah. it, it said it was uh, that's the person on the Mad TV, Mad uh, magazines. Yeah. And, and don't don't tell me that's supposed to be like a. Aphrodite too. Oh. Yeah, well, it's it's allegory and symbolism. Oh. You got to remember the basic uh, story of Freemasonry mm-hmm. when it's being described. They say that it's a religion mm-hmm. with allegory and symbolism, and how they write it is a system of morality yep. illustrated or veiled in allegory and illustrated by symbols. Morality is Roma it why. There's your allegory just in the word morality, which basically means religion. Mm-hmm. But it's Roma, it why. Why means two in one. It why. Yeah, but behind every like self help, because you think about it, like it's it's a, it's like such a perfect cover to hide behind. Morality. Religion. Huh. Religion. Yeah, religion. Yeah, because it's all about. Hypocrisy and illusion. Yeah, and these guys, all these characters that I, you know, that we see, like they hide behind all these different religions. Like, like with Tony Blair, you know, this guy. You hear this guy turn to a Catholic, you know, convert to Catholicism. But then you hear him; he's like in, in like South America or something, in a temple, <laughs> praying in a temple or something, with the uh, people over there. Yeah, within the Catholic Church, mm-hmm. the ecclesiastic Freemasonry yeah. division uh-huh. is uh, 
is one that has a totally different religion mm -hmm. than the one being promoted on the outside. Mm -hmm. I mean, the one promoted on the outside is for the masses. Yep. And its purpose is to control and collect money. And in order to achieve the goals of the ones hidden on the inside, mm -hmm. the the ones that know the real story, mm -hmm. they create uh, reformation groups, separatists within their kind, mm -hmm. and those separatists called protest ants go out and spend the money, and nobody blames the church for having done these things. But in fact, the protest movements are just divisions of the bigger church. Yep. And they always, it's all dialectic. They always have split-offs and so yep. on. And, that, and that's been happening since the beginning, from what I see, like in the India. Yeah. With the, they had like all these different... And 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 over there, I was looking into a little bit of the history, of like Buddha. And yeah. I don't even know if it's, it doesn't even sound true. You know, it sounds all like, like lies. Buddha is is basically telling you the story. This buds for you <laughs> because a bud mm -hmm. is a seed, and and the media is the seed. It's called medes. Medes is just a recombining of the letters so that you can hide the fact that it means seed. You forget the first letter, and what's left is two E's, a D, and an S. Seed. And then when you take the M in, you turn it around, and it becomes a weed. So the seed of the weeds are the Protestants. That's why you call them Swedes. <laughs> you must have like a, you must be laughing all the time when you just like look at watch, the news. I watch the news and I shake my head. I said, you know, people will believe this is true. <laughs> <laughs> That's why uh, whenever I see it. I'm always like, damn, it's just it's so fake, and I just can't, I can't even bear to watch it. It's just too. Yeah. I have a feeling that, you know, if there are still Neanderthalers, mm -hmm. which I doubt because I think they've transferred everything to the mainframe computer, mm -hmm. and there's no need for the idiot part anymore. So. Unless they have a zoo there where they keep these, uh, but I, I have a feeling that if there were, every night they would sit in a tavern and review what the news said during the day and break out laughing. You think they can even they're capable of that? Like they're like a computer, like. like... Yeah, I, I'm I'm just giving a a <laughs> allegorical. <laughs> view of things, you know, because uh, it's so stupid, mm -hmm. and yet when you build stupid on stupid, uh, as the general that went to uh, New Orleans mm -hmm. uh, and during the hurricane said to the media, you're stuck on stupid. Yeah. And, and they knew and he knew what they what he meant. Uh, you just keep repeating stuff that makes no sense, but because you've repeated it so many times, you have a following out there who believes it. <laughs> yeah, I see some crazy. Uh, one time on the news, I see some guy who calls himself the Antichrist, and he had a whole group of following of people who says, "Yeah, the Antichrist, the good guy," and he's. He's him right here. He's like, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm the Antichrist, and he had everybody, all his followers tattooed six, six, six on them, and they were, 
It was just oh my god. Well, the the Christ is an allegory mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. We are going to be crucified, and we're in the process of being crucified. So if someone was an antichrist, mm -hmm. he would have to be anti-human. <laughs> but you can't get that across to people who've been told that Christ died for you on the cross. He must be good. Yeah, yeah well, the story is that, that Christ... Uh, died for you because you're about to die for you. Yeah. And you're going to die for you because you're stupid. Yeah. And and there's going to be a new you who's going to take your place. And he's not going to be stupid. He's just going to be programmed. Those are the lessons learned from dealing with human beings. They can be made stupid, but why make them stupid when you can program them just to do what you want them to do? Don't need this whole cover. All you need is to get refined and straight to the point. Now, as long as there are two genders out there, that's a problem because you have drives, uh, sex drives, that, that basically override programs. <laughs> so you remove those uh, sex drives by removing gender. Ultimate synthesis. Yeah, you remove the sex drive. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. You can't you cannot uh remove sex drives by covering them up. Because when you cover the things up they come out some other form. It's it's even worse. <laughs> More focus is put on them and, and the perfect view of that is is uh is breath. Breasts had, had no particular uh, focus when they were bare. But you cover them up, and everybody's looking, where did the feed station go? So, <laughs> so what you do is you put them female as everybody. But you don't want female, so you have a male on the inside who's really the body, but you don't want the male either to be running the show, so you put in Piggy. The best example that I can think of explaining this um, in, in a way that is both allegorical and symbolic and, and visual. Mm -hmm. You've seen painters work before, right? Yes. Yeah. They use an instrument called a step ladder, right? Mm -hmm. One side has steps. That's the uh, side that is used the most. Mm -hmm. The other side is support structure. That's the side that is used the least, but the one the steps lean upon. There's a a bar in the middle that joins the two that can fold and allow them to come together or open up and perform a support structure. That support structure becomes like a capital letter A. But to be a really useful stepladder, it has close to the top on the side of the female, the, the back support, not the one that's out in front in masonry and that has all these steps. Mm -hmm. It has this fold-out unit at the shoulder level of the step ladder that holds everything while you're doing your work. That's the Neanderthal. 
The back side is the female, the front side is the male, and it's all held together with this uh, pack sack at the top. Yeah, and I looked, you know, medulla. I'm looking at... But before I forget, Mm -hmm. the last part is, think of the word ladder. Ladder. Second lad. Uh-huh. Second lad. E-R is two. Ladder. E-R. Lad. Uh-huh. E-R. Second lad. What's the second lad? What's the? Uh, uh... Well, the first lad is us. Uh-huh. The second lad is one that's married and has a Neanderthaler. I was looking. We we are like a straight ladder mm-hmm. by ourselves. Yeah. We need outside support. But a package is a step ladder. It all folds up together. <laughs> when I look at all the like politicians, I've been like taking a closer look now, like sometimes I have to go go crazy, like I'm looking at them like the women. I'm like, is that a, a man? Because I see, like, and some of them, I do see, like, that men, like that, almost like a, it look kind of male to me, but. That's that's the problem that they've been working on from the time of uh, Nefertiti. How do you make certain that the male part doesn't show on the outside and how do you make that outside part most appealing especially in a time when uh, fashion changes Mm -hmm. Uh, at one time fat women were considered beautiful yeah they they still are in other countries and and today there is a a vision of beauty that has been manufactured by magazines such as Playboy. Yeah. And and it doesn't matter what you used to think was beautiful. You're programmed to believe that this is beautiful. Yeah. And and most of the women in Playboy magazine yeah. uh, have been airbrushed. Mm-hmm. To the point where what you're seeing is not quite what was there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's all like di- uh, you know, digital on on the on the <laughs> and and even I think Hugh Hefner too. He was because I heard he was actually uh, related to George Bush. Yeah, and he he's probably uh, maybe Brad <laughs> for that too. Uh, so yeah, so if these women who are ma- female on the outside and men uh, male on the inside? That means, because you said most men, you know, they think sex in a sandwich, so they would be, they would think like that too. Yeah, that's why they are used basically for oral sex, because oral sex is by its very nature sex for pleasure rather than sex for procreation. Yeah. So they ba- basically make their way in life by offering the men they want to control the things they know that the male wants, which is sex for pleasure. So, But then you have to turn it around and say, What does this woman want? This woman wants security and sovereignty. Therefore, she's not a woman because security and sovereignty is what the Neanderthaler wants. Mm -hmm. So men are asking for something 
and they think they're getting it, but in fact they're getting more than what they are asking for. What they're getting is control over themselves by Neanderthaler via woman. Hmm. Not woman as we know them or think of them, but as woman spelled W E E M A N. Amen. In in uh, the PlayStation, there's a game called We. W I I. Mm-hmm. I and E are interchangeable. So the symbology there is mm-hmm. what you're getting is a PlayStation when you're getting one of these women. Mm-hmm. But she has a goal different from yours. She wants to dominate you and take all the money. And she thinks she's doing it for herself. Exactly. That... But in fact, she's putting it in banks so that the Neanderthaler has better access than she does. Mm-hmm. And he steals it regularly. In the events called credit crunch <laughs> or bad investments. Yeah. yeah. I, I see that with, um, I know I have a friend, a girlfriend, and I've been thinking of, like, how she thinks, man, like, to dominate the guy. Yeah. You know, like, and, and, and it's, it's so insidious how just because she's, you know, the opposite sex and she gives him, sex or whatever he won't do anything <laughs> yeah he just take it and oh man oh. that's the whole game oh man how, how does a Neanderthaler with no power of its own physical power take command of a situation from a clan mother. Step one, Mm -hmm. divide genders. Step two, create marriage. Oh, wow. Step three, offer prostitution. Step four, merge them back again. Make the male part of the female again. And finally, insert yourself into the project and bring along your lettuce. Lettuce is just another word for tell us. The telephone must be merged into the final product too, so that It's not dependent upon the person to communicate. By taking some direct action, it will just happen. The communications from the perfect slave will be constant. The cell phone will be living in its head. And as it sees Mm -hmm. things, the main computer sees them. Yeah. And as it hears things, the main computer hears it. So these um, so a real a a, a genuine one hundred percent woman, wh- what would their thinking process be like? Well, the original clan mother, the process was stay alive. Mm-hmm. Second in line was clone yourself so that. As you age, you will be replaced. And third, during the time that you're living with the children, Mm -hmm. make sure that if there is a defect among the children, that it doesn't affect the welfare of the entire group. So you become a kind of a politician and and judge 
of the daily activities of the members of the clan. And and if need be, the um, the person who takes action to weed out those things that would be injurious to the clan. So if you have a a member of the clan who is constantly harassing and and doing things that hinder the welfare of the clan, you take certain steps. First one is a light penalty. Second one is a heavier penalty. And the third one is you're done. And that was in clan mentality, banishment from the tribe. Usually banishment on three levels, banished for two weeks, banished for two years, and banished forever. Should you choose to return from your third banishment, the option is simple, death. Hmm. Oh. That would have been the life of clan mothers. But they polarized from the very beginning and made male female. Yeah, the, the Neanderthaler offered the female what she believed would be a helper, who would be task-specific and handle those things which she didn't really have all the time to do. But in fact, after the birth of the male, the female did not communicate to the Neanderthaler who had helped in this process her appreciation for the helpers she had received. Mm -hmm. She, in fact, used the helpers to be more powerful still. So the Neanderthaler felt a self of defeat. Yeah, and, and he wanted to control everything to fill in. Yeah, so but, he decided to turn things around uh, by turning the male against the female. Uh -huh. Saying, what are you doing, you stupid asshole? <laughs> you're bigger, you're stronger, you're faster, and you're putting up with this shit? <laughs> and at one point... Males started to do things that put clan mother in her place to the point where you have it all over uh, the uh, uh, Islamic world where a woman is something that li lives inside a bag. Yeah. Huh, that's wild. And nobody can see it. Yeah. But they can open the bag and, and screw it so that they can have babies and then close the bag up again. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, man. Yeah, see, um, and, uh, well, yeah, with the, um, the, the clan mother, they, they didn't, you said, that, did they have, did they have brains that they, they only had intuition, they didn't, did they have reason? Were they able to they, not to the level of genius. Mm -hmm. They were basically um, one step more than animals. They could uh, reason, but on a limited scale. you got to remember that this process mm -hmm. of uh, homo habilis mm -hmm. is uh, a process that took millions of years to develop until at about 200,000 B.C., 
one of the females caught on and and became more like us, whereas many had existed before, but they just were born, lived, and died. Born, lived, and died. Some of them born, have a baby, lived, and died. Um, and that's why they kept coming back all the time. But at one stage of the game, one lived and died, and that can be proven through mitochondrial DNA, which exists in females. You can take all the races of the world, mm-hmm. extract their DNA, put it on a blackboard as genome, go through the DNA and say, okay, in the four basic races on the planet, uh, which one of these uh, genome does not exist in all four? And you go through each one and you throw it out if it's missing in any of the four. And at the end, you come out with there was only one person. It was one woman who existed at a time, argumentatively speaking, any time from 200,000 to 115,000 years ago. Now, you also know Mm -hmm. that the first male appears at 80,000 years ago. So obviously, that's when the gender division was made. By that time, the Neanderthaler and the female had met again. Mm -hmm. So they had been born sometime from a single source two million years ago, but the Neanderthaler had gone in one direction and the female had gone in the other direction. The the human had gone in the other direction and became a clan mother at 115,000 B.C., a hermaphrodite, and then began to divide genders when the two met again. So the concept there is the same concept as Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. They are shaped differently by the environment, the social structure they have lived over the millions of years that brought them to that point. Mm-hmm. And uh, one is more um, shrub like, while the other one is more flower like. To some people, flowers are more beautiful. To others, shrubs are more beautiful. Most people, however, believe flowers are more beautiful. But flowers are basically genetically engineered products. And the the shrub is more like um, uh, the Japanese make, the uh, bonsai. Yeah, you said it was symbolic of something. Yeah. yeah. It's it's the original small version of all trees. Trees must grow first, mm-hmm. or there is no way that flowers could survive. The wind, the cold, the, uh, the rain, the sleet, the snow, mm-hmm. all of that, make it uh, impossible for flowers to live unless they have protection. So what you have is deciduous trees provide protection by creating an umbrella over the space. But deciduous trees cannot grow until pine trees have provided protection 
for the seed of deciduous trees to grow. So the origin is the pine, and therefore the spine is the same thing. And then the body is deciduous, but from the deciduous tree comes the cover that the Neanderthaler provided to the flower. So when you think of oak, for example, you think of Neanderthaler. When you think of uh, any of the hardwood trees, the mm-hmm. elm, the uh, the oak, the apple tree, they they basically have a big umbrella that covers space and provides protection for the flowers. The flowers that grew were the clan mothers. And from that, they cut down the clan mothers and replaced them with alders. Alders are all this scrap wood that you see growing in in patches of wood uh, that had, in fact, at one time been cut down for lumber. So they they basically are a soft wood. They break much easier. And it's interesting that they would use the word alder oh, to talk about the coming second sun. And a mean, mm-hmm. bra mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> has a mean in it. Yeah, I, I think what's interesting too in, in in the mythologies, like when I was in the one book I was reading about, it, they say how uh, they show you the 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 movement. From a change from a matriarchy to patriarchy by mm-hmm. different gods and goddesses. Um, yeah, but um, ma- but the, uh, along the way, mm-hmm. the transfer is ruled by men who dress like women. Yeah, priests. <laughs> yeah, and um, with these Scotsmen, uh, <laughs> Arabs. <laughs> yeah. I see. I'm looking at one like... thing as well. While I think of it, that you always have to remember mm-hmm. the last four letters of Jerusalem, Lamb, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. contain the word lame, whale, male. But the one we keep forgetting is it also contains the word elam. Elam was the kingdom of the Medi in Persia. The Media. Uh Elam. It was the king of Elam that Esther went to live in and become part of his, uh, uh, it was called the females living together, the um, harem, Uh harem. And and it was Esther that basically gave the Jewish people power over the Persians by infiltrating through the harem and became the queen of Persia and prevented the killing of the Jews. That's the story in the Bible that leads to the festival called Purim, which is happening now first part of the month of March is in the Jewish calendar, the 13th, 14th, 15th period of their calendar. So what did this woman do to the king of Persia to beat out all of the other women? It's simple. 
They gave the king sons. They lay on their back. They said, screw me, and I can go home, and I'll give you a baby. Whereas Esther walked in and said, hi, honey, you want a blowjob? <laughs> What's that? Come here, I'll show you. <laughs> and yeah. and and the king went, wow, all the other girls are so mild, <laughs> and you're so wild. You flipped the M in mild around and became wild. <laughs> Boy, you make me jump. I'll create a state and name it after you. Call it Minnesota. <laughs> Sota, jump. <laughs> where bridges even jump and fall down. And Minnie Mouse got her name. <laughs> Minnie Mouse. And it's a city called Minneapolis. <laughs> a city of A's that are mini. Wow. So when you see these women who are, like, you said you've met a few? or I've lived with them. <laughs> I've been married to them. Oh man, what did did you uh, confront them about it or no? No, because I didn't grasp the concept oh. at the time. Yeah. It's it's only after my um, second divorce mm-hmm. that I broke the code. It's like I had got all the experiences I needed. Now I needed uh, a way to explain it. And the Desdemona Code became the vehicle where I could explain all the things I had seen to myself. But then I find out that this code was the main language of the priest of Zoroastrian religion of Persia Mm -hmm. and was brought to North America with the migrations at the end of the 1800s when uh, 12 million people were sent in a 20-year period from about 1885 to 1905 just before World War One, and and the reason why the French put up the Statue of Liberty, yeah, Master Day. There, there was a backlash in New York of all these immigrants coming in, taking over all the jobs, just like there is today. Yeah. So they wanted to put a stop to it, and and what had to happen was to use a medium to teach people that this was this migration was okay. So you got the development of universities, you got the development of the press, and you got the development of the cinema, all of which were designed to make the people believe that what they believed was wrong and to allow these migrants to continue until the flood was finished. So since they were all being managed by the Greek called Mm Taras and his new residence, which includes IRS in the name Pa Riss, was France, they sent a statue. And the statue is one of a female male that sits in the harbor and says, come on down. (laughs) And everybody was made to feel ashamed if, in fact, They allowed these people to come in. Uh, It was for their own good. And therefore, they should feel proud 
And that was a complete reversal by the media from what they had told them before. What they had told them before is what you want is slaves, not people who take your job. And you bring them in from Africa, and while they're working in the farm on the farm for you, mm-hmm. you screw their women, so that in the end there will be mulattoes, which is the goal, is tan. Yeah, I see that. Like I know for black people, it seems to me like you'll see a lot more black people who seem to be more like physically stronger or yeah they they were Brett workers <laughs> oh man physical workers uh, i can see that with myself and they came from africa where chasing down an animal on the hunt was how you earned a living yeah. you can run faster so it's all genetics oh man so they... So we're all carrying out programs. Yeah, the the whole idea was skull and bones. The black person was the bones, and the Caucasian was given RAM memory because it had to get them out into outer space. Mm -hmm. And now the job is to merge the two into a single person, that will be female on the outside, tan in color, mulatto in color, but will consist of the task-specific intelligence needed for the job and a communications device that lets head office know what's going on all the time. Wow. I I'm just still I'm still trying to like uh, this the whole male it's, it's like damn so I could so if I like you know I could I go for women that, that's like sleeping with a man in a sense Yeah well think of it many men make the mistake they go into these gay bars and they pick up a woman and they take it home and then they stick their hand in the pants and find a penis <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden they're shocked well, the Neanderthaler worked all of this out in his head, and he said, hey, there shouldn't be a penis there. There should be a man there, but there should be a female on the outside, so there's never this discovery <laughs> at the last minute that screws up the entire project here. Mm-hmm. So, I mean... The, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it does. It makes sense. They they planned it. It didn't happen overnight. It was all trial and error. Mm. So when these, um, uh, so the women that are men inside, like they think like men, but they have uh, like, physical attributes on the outer side. Yeah, but but they still have like hormonal things, just like a female and everything. Yeah. Uh, are they able to have children? For four generations, mm-hmm. they can have children, and then it dies out. Like the allegory I gave you of the Coca-Cola mm-hmm. syrup, yeah. the original has 62%. The other generations have less, more around the 10%, slightly higher or slightly lower for four generations, and then they basically die out as as a ability to give birth uh, unless they get a booster shot. And the booster shot is they become um, surrogate mothers and carry a new 62 percenter to birth. Who starts the process all over again? And that has a purpose, because if if you're the Neanderthaler and you're running the universe from underground in planet Earth, mm-hmm. and you're sending people out to 
different rocks in the universe, Mm -hmm. you want them to have children and terraform that rock. But you don't want them to be like the pilgrims and at one stage of the game believe, uh, fuck England, we're on our own, we're going to do this, why should we be paying them taxes? Mm -hmm. So if the pilgrims could not have given birth beyond four generations, they would have simply died out. And that's the purpose that is being built into these new slaves, is if they start doing things that head office doesn't like, Mm -hmm. then they don't get the next shipment of eggs. They have the fertilizing power, but they don't have the egg-making power. That's the final product. All of the eggs will be made from stem cell, genome, um, and... As I put in the piece today, mm-hmm. uh, much of it comes from ancient shit. <laughs> they, ancient. Find, they find within the shit the um, stem cells, <laughs> not only of the person that ate the food mm-hmm. or the animal that ate the food, uh, but also of the things they ate. So they can tell what the diet of that thing that ate was, and they can tell what it was. And and that's why in Los Angeles they have two gangs. Mm-hmm. One is called the Crips, mm-hmm. and the other one is called the Blood. Mm-hmm. The Crips basically mean that you're made from a mummy, mm-hmm. a dead person. And the bloods is you're made from a living person. You're part of the four generations. Hmm. There are none other than that left on the planet. There are no originals. And I, I was looking at the word, like even the word, like how you said, blacks or original people. You look at the word, I guess that's why they call them Negro, because backwards it's or, origin. If I do, yeah. Well, e- <laughs> you, ha- you have three parts to the word original. First part is if you're a miner, you find the mineral, mm-hmm. and it's called ore. Mm. So ori, I can be an E. That's the ore. That's the beginning product. Mm-hmm. Then you have jinn. That's genie. That's genius. Mm. That's something that comes in a bottle that you rub and a genie comes out. <laughs> That's DNA. That's genetic engineering. Mm. And you have al. That's female. La. Yeah. Le la. Male is le. Female la. How you were saying how the Neanderthals they feel like they're not appreciated? Um, is that an allegory too? And um, I fact? don't think so. I think it is the crux of the matter. Uh, uh no, no. I was saying I was gonna ask. Um, uh, is the Phantom of the Opera is that an allegory? Of, oh, sure. Of that. Yeah, it's it's uh, basically a play. On the original story, which was the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah, and the Hunchback is the piggy on the back? Is that what that is? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And it can fly, you know, it's like Tarzan. From one place to the other. It can sneak underneath mm-hmm. in the basement. And it has the the potential for bringing down the structure. Like Samson. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm. I'm. I want to look for more of these movies that you see. You said Skin. You mentioned Skin yeah. before. You mentioned Twins. I, I haven't. 
I can't find the movie Skin that you know I've been touching. Well, it's too new, probably. Uh, yeah, I, I want to watch Skin, and I want to uh, see. Uh, do you know any other uh, movies out there with? Um, Every movie has, has a story for the masses, yeah. and it has an allegory for those people who are in the know. Everyone, or they wouldn't be making it. Yeah. While I was doing my site uh-huh. and producing the site that's on that I don't produce anymore, uh-huh. uh, every day there uh-huh. were two or three companies uh-huh. that I know write scripts for movies. <laughs> yeah. And and one of the first movies that came out after I started making my site was conspiracy theory. Oh, I remember, yeah, I remember. A guy who makes a paper. Yeah, Mel Gibson. Yeah. yeah. And and delivers the paper and he only has a limited number of subscribers. Yeah. You know? It's it was all done to scare people off from buying my paper. Oh uh. Ah. <laughs> they all die if they buy the paper. You know, that's that was how they controlled the outcome of my work from the beginning. But the masses won't understand that. Oh, of course not. The masses think, hey, you know, the the uh, cons- it was all a conspiracy theory, <laughs> and at the end they say, or was it? <laughs> they always throw in this. Maybe it was all true. What if? if yeah. they, uh, the, they did the same thing in Skull and Bones, the movie. Oh yeah. yeah. It was it was a freelancer, or yeah. was it? <laughs> That's the whole crux of uh, how religion yeah. works. You know, if you die. You never know what you got. This whole mystery, and I guess that's why they put the two letters F in life. Yeah. <laughs> what if? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> when you when you die, you're going to hell unless something happens. Yeah. Because when you die, you're on top of the planet. Your your body tra- changes to its component parts of chemistry and make their way down the creeks to the rivers to the sea to the sediment to the uh, moho discontinuity. So you arrive in heaven, you're in the moho discontinuity. <laughs> but if if they're not quite sure they want to use you, you go back, you go through, and you become part of the upper mantle. But if they decide you're useless in the form you're at, they let you go to the core. And in the core, mm-hmm. you're recombined with all the other DNA and then shot up as new lava and you start the process of making life again by making a plant in a vineyard that grows grapes. And a grape has on one side good stuff and on the other side bad stuff because you can eat and survive with grapes, mm-hmm. but the acetone can blow you up. Mm. Duality. <laughs> yeah. um, it, how long does this process take? Like, Which process? You know, going the normal to... process? <laughs> well, human beings have been on the planet for 200,000 years. Mm-hmm. And uh, some of us uh, have made it back and forth a number of times. I can't tell you the exact number, mm-hmm. but having lived the experiences that are in my intuition. Uh, I know that it's at least a number of times, and I would suggest uh, half a dozen to a dozen times. But that obviously is because I never, my DNA was not seen as going into hell, into the fire at the core of the earth. It was always recycled before it got there and only uh, once 
uh, was it recycled by the kidnappers at at the uh, phase of uh, the moho other times before it was recycled much closer to the surface of the planet probably in an event like uh, you die your dna is in the ground it's picked up by the life of a blade of grass the grass is then eaten by a wild pig and the wild pig then is eaten by an african and the african has a child that was in fact me the first time mm. so there are lengths of journeys and there are lengths of journeys the one i've just described would be the shortest journey the longest journey would be you are uh, uh, part of the sediment which is uh, cleansed of the salt in the sea i think i've told you this before yeah. but it needs repeating occasionally mm-hmm. because the sea was fresh water mm-hmm. as things die they decompose in the sea and the sea becomes saltier salt is necessary to our body because it helps us digest food it's part of the metabolism process it breaks down the things we eat and in the same way once it's broken down and returns to salt if it were left in water to the point beyond the ability of the water to survive the water would die therefore you have the dead sea mm-hmm. the uh, lake van in turkey and and in utah uh, the salt lake city sea there so that salt is now intelligent salt <laughs> In other words, it is called basalt. It got a degree, a BA, while it was out the first time. And as basalt, it forms part of the crust, upper mantle crust of the earth called the Moho discontinuity. So if it's picked up from there, and then by in- intelligent design genetically engineered to make a return journey that is the middle way first way is making the return journey from the surface then the middle way is making it from the uh, uh, moho to genetic engineering and the worst way is that it can never come back as it was if it goes into the core it's recombined with other dna so that the recombination makes a totally different entity and the original one disappears mm-hmm. as having proved itself useless it 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 interesting to like you go into hen like, like the, the india the hindu yeah this whole, it seems like like when you talk if you would tell this to somebody this is like the religion like this is like the the belief of like hindus but they they took that concept i guess and turned it into yeah, the, the priests manipulate reality mm-hmm. for their benefit and and needing to identify the ones that they did it to especially in women they put a dot on the forehead oh and the dot on the forehead uh is symbolic of the unicorn and the unicorn is symbolic of they didn't want to be crass and put it in the mouth so 
but it is symbolic of a penis. So, what are they saying? The dickhead or something? Oral sex is the way uh-huh. to get power uh-huh. for these women. Uh-huh. And it works. You know, having been married uh, and lived with a number of women and having slept with hundreds, if not more, mm-hmm. uh, I can tell you that the worst sex you can have mm-hmm. is somebody who lies on the bed and says, uh, well, go ahead, do your... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mean. Do you mind if I have an ice cream cone while you're doing it? Yeah. You know, <laughs> They're like old, dead. It's like a dead person. Or yeah, there's an old story in French that, that says, uh, how do you know when your woman has had an orgasm the ice cream falls on her cone and onto your back. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But but the Roma, the Gypsy, mm-hmm. the second version of women, mm-hmm. it was wild, and that's why in the Greek mythology they talk about going to Persia and seeing these wild animals, unicorns. <laughs> because they didn't want to tell outright that what they saw was in fact uh, a a woman who was queen during the day and could discuss uh, the politics of the world and the evolution of the universe and entertain the guests and dance. Yeah. Slowly and and womanlike, but as soon as the guest went away, she turned the M in the name in the word mild over and became wild, like a an African gazelle. <laughs> she was all over you, mm. and oral sex not procreation sex was what it was all about and therefore there was no need for pleasure sex with little boys for the king he had his pleasure sex with this wild woman in his harem that he made the queen Mm. now that whole concept was taken by the Jesuits and taken to Japan, and they closed down the island for 200 years. And while they were changing the structure of the government of Japan, they also took the time to invent something that is called geisha. And a geisha woman Mm -hmm. goes through a process of training, and it begins by cleaning toilets for the first three months, all she does is waddle in shit until shit becomes second nature to her, and she has no fear of shit. It's it's <laughs> part of her life because she's taught mm-hmm. that many of the important people of the world were extracted, their DNA was extracted from shit. And therefore, it's important and not to be shunned, but to be appreciated as the end product of an entire system. (laughs) Yeah, India, that's that's the whole class of people that just clean shit for that. Yeah, And, and, and then they start educating her in the ways of the world, and she becomes the entertainer for the visitors. And when they leave, Mm -hmm. she becomes a wild animal and offers her master the joys of living. Not this wham-bam, sorry man stuff. (laughs) Uh So when you look at, like, ever, like, notice, like, say, Hispanic people, they seem to be more sex-orientated in a sense, like, 
Mm-hmm. That's because they they were taught to divide sex for family with sex for pleasure. And and they brought that from the east to the west when they took over Spain. Moors took over Spain. Mm-hmm. And and the Berbers are a combination of the Roma and the African. So they they basically bring a new philosophy, and that philosophy then becomes the philosophy of you have to have a mistress. You have a wife at home, and you have a mistress yeah. for pleasure, yeah. and that's the French. Yeah. And and the French wife doesn't interfere with mistresses, and mistresses don't embarrass wives. They're trained for their role. Uh-uh. Don't forget that in French, mm-hmm. Isha contains the words she mm-hmm. and ga. Ga is the French word for boy. G A R S. Oh man, oh, man. she boy. Oh man, here we go again. The That's a geisha. It's a she boy. Oh man. That's a woman. So you want to stick your hand in her pants, you're not going to find a prick. You probably will find a prick in the whole body. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So everybody, it's interesting though. You say like you said like like Asian people, they were made to be read on memory, of yeah, ROM. ROM memory. Uh, well, read only. Read only. Follow the book. The book was presented to them by Confucius. By Confucius. <laughs> Confuse us. Yeah. Here you go. I'm stupid. Tell me what you want me to know. Oh, wow. I'm thinking about that. Like, it sounds kind of true. Like, Well, oh. it is true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it makes sense. But if you're, you're not 40 yet. You haven't lived uh, long enough to know all of these things through experience. What I'm giving you is a preview of your life. Everybody gets to learn it. Mm-hmm. Not everybody gets to want to know it, and most people want to forget it as they learn it. You'll never be able to forget it because the way I place it in your hand, it's like toothpaste, and you cannot squeeze that back into the tube. It's (laughs) there forever. (laughs) That's what my site is all about. It's, It's without realizing it, you're getting toothpaste all over you. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm. I, I, every the way, because the whole format of how you say okay, like you present something, and it's basically you gotta research everything, look into, it, look at definite, and that's how I research everything now. Yeah. I'm just, I'm sitting there mining, and not what's not my uh, deep diving, digging yeah. like you. Are. Yeah. I'm turning. None of this surface crap. Yeah. Strip mining is for Gaza. <laughs> yeah. Gaza Strip. Yeah, but and, and when you learn, you know, certain things like before I I found your stuff, I would I would I would look at things differently from I guess what most people how most people looked at it. Like, yeah, you had to, or you would never been attracted to this stuff. Yeah. All I'm doing is putting words into the concepts you are beginning to grasp by your own research. But you had no vehicle to tie it all together and to explain it to yourself. You knew it intuitively, but you couldn't basically verbalize it. And and some people end up being able to verbalize it better than others. Me, I've been around enough times. I'm like rain that became sleet, that became uh, ice, snow and ice. But by this time, I'm like a six-inch block of ice. (laughs) 
if mm. I ever hit anything, it knows. Mm. But I don't know. I was always, since I was younger, like I, I even, but like now, like I, like since years ago, I've been like attracted to this stuff. Like, because most people they they get into, they find out about the conspiracy, and they just, you know, they stay in the laws and and studying like who's passing on the law. But I always was like. Always wanted, but th- but that's what you know. A- Adam, a- um, I think Adam Weishaupt said that they always use uh, fa- uh, fascination to attract people. Adam Weishaupt was just a Jesuit. Yeah, he was. Who was who was uh, mm-hmm. moved out of the Jesuits while he did his Illuminati stuff, mm-hmm. and then brought back in when he was finished. That's the way of the Jesuits. Yeah, they... You play the game of I am. Je suis. Mm-hmm. I am. What is it I am today? Something different, if that will get the process moving further. But yeah, when people... <laughs> Like you said, if the media, you said the media, like they tried calling you before, uh, but <laughs> you you could never go on the media, man. They would they would make you look so crazy in front of everybody. They that's, make, they, that's all they have going for them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, they have a bunch of slaves mm-hmm. out there who are pre-programmed to believe them. Yeah. So, you know, even in a courtroom, uh, if if you have to defend yourself, you're defending yourself in front of a jury who've been chosen specifically because they're stupid. <laughs> there used to be 20, 25 people in a grand jury, and and because that gave the chance of one person having a brain... They cut it down to 12 because it takes at least 13 for there to be a real brain. So at 12, the odds are all on the side of the judge. The judge can make all the decisions for them. And he's wearing a dress, too. Yep. Yeah, with the, and that 13, that concept... The, you said that, that that comes from, I guess, that the orange. You said it's a symbol of protection, all those 13 yeah, protecting. The, the orange is a false one, whereas in physics you have the real one. Oh. Orange, if you look at an orange, it's uh, you can have uh, 11 slices, 10 slices, 9 slices, uh, some bigger than others, and they're all kind of uh, hung around. Uh, and inside protecting the seed and mm-hmm. and in the seed's growth providing feed but it's an unequal unstable structure whereas the real structure in physics says they must be in the shape of a ball that ball must be replicated by 12 balls of exactly the same measurement on the outside protecting the one on the inside. That's what the system doesn't want. So they use the thing that would be the closest to that to sell to the members of their secret society which they dressed in orange and called Buddhists, mm. and then called them orange men. So that's why they use that number then, like with the 13 families. Yes. Oh, that concept of a... 12 around one. And that's cap... And there, cap- is, mm-hmm. there is, in fact, no one. The 13 have different roles. Mm-hmm. And at different times, different roles need protection. So the one that needs protection 
slides to the middle, the middle one joins the ones on the outside. And and that's how it works. Hmm. And in, in the space program, they used it for landing on a planet that has no gravity. Mm -hmm. Put the the satellite inside the ball in the middle, and then 12 balls on the outside are inflated, and the package dumped, and it just kind of floats down and bounces until it runs out of its own energy. And once it stops, then the satellite receives a message to do like an egg, puncture the balloon that surrounds you, mm -hmm. and then puncture your way out of the balloons that surround that balloon, and you're out on the planet. Yeah, I want to act, um, with, I, I don't know if you ever looked at, like, art and stuff, but, um, like, like, I see people, like, okay, like this, like, Leonardo da Vinci, right, like, what, he was, obviously, he was, you know, in, I guess, in the mysteries, right, because he makes Absolutely. a lot of pictures. Absolutely. Yeah, and he makes some pictures, like, I've seen one picture, where it's like a man, and they show a man with his arms spread out, or whatever, um. And uh, and, and and when you look at it, it's actually like a five-pointed star, too. Yeah. And and, and are there are there different levels of like like numerology, like with the new because you use like numbers to display different uh you know proto uh, prototypes of, of slaves. Yes, they're, they're not different levels, more task specific levels. Every task has a job to do. Yeah. And that, I got to put wood in my fire here. Mm -hmm. Tasks um, are, are then assigned whatever their duties are. But do you think, like, uh, another artist, you know, uh, is like Vincent Van Gogh, I think he had. Um... They would not be known by you today yeah. if they were artists that were not approved. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, authorized. Yeah. Because an artist is just another form of media. Yeah. Press is one form. University is one form. Art, music, each one has a form. Yeah, and, and the whole thing, and they they really they really like love that middle number two. I guess number yeah, number two is number one, but like like I looked up medulla and uh, and it said it, it means the middle or something. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Well, I, the the place was Elam, mm -hmm. the country was Media. Elam. Yeah, that was the capital before the name was changed to Sousa. <laughs> I guess, uh USA. So I guess I gotta look up uh the history of Elam. <laughs> oh Susanna, don't you cry <laughs> for me. Yeah, what oh, I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. <laughs> so what did you mean in that other song that you you, you, you put the song uh by uh, uh Simon and Garfunkel it said like a bridge over troubled water. Like I'm a bridge over troubled water. Well, that's what I am. You're living in a time of troubled waters. Mm -hmm. And I'm like a bridge that brings you from the knowledge you had to the knowledge you need. Mm -hmm. huh. That was the theme song of the Canadian Institute for Political Integrity. Mm -hmm. When I gave a talk... Uh, before I went on the stage, a tape recording device with a replay on that song was put at the microphone. And as people entered the hall, mm. that's what they would hear. Mm. Bridge over troubled waters. Mm. 
and then I came on and for the first half gave a factual account of what had occurred to me in my dealings with the government of Canada and the building of a $160 million project. In the second half, after you allow people to go for a pee, yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you get into the nitty-gritty of what does this all mean? What's in it? What, what do you need to know? As I progressed in explaining, I would move further and further away from dealing with day-to-day -day corruption by politicians. Everybody wanted to hear about corruption by politicians because they all believe it. Yeah, that's it. I, I, I used to just, when I first went into this, I used to be corruption politician. Oh, homosexual scandal, he's a little boy. But that that's like a form of entertainment to people. Of course. Too. You're, you're telling them things that they already believe, and therefore they'll throw $5 in the basket. Yeah. <laughs> I had an Indian with me uh, for part of my speaking tour, and his name was Tom Matnus. Mm -hmm. Still is Tom Matnus. He's about a year younger than me. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's the one who said, you know, Glenn, don't mind you talking about some of the things you talk about, but can you put them in the second half after we pass the basket? <laughs> So he knew more than I did mm -hmm. that it was important to collect money. Mm -hmm. and to me, if if uh, if you do the right thing, survival money comes. Yeah. Maybe you don't get the kind of money that uh, people are looking for so they can drive around in Rolls Royces mm -hmm. preaching religion. But that wasn't my task, you see. Th those were lessons that I learned in one of the first or second time on this journey. Now that I'm into my uh, many times, let's say half a dozen to a dozen times I've been through this process of being remanufactured and put out to observe, analyze, and conclude. I know the value of money, and I know it in a way different from other people. To me, the value of money is as a tool. But there are many tools. Money is like a pair of vice grips. It can be used to hit things. It can be used to squeeze things. It can be used to turn things. In other words, it has uh, uh, a symbolic uh, likeness to almost every tool in the tool case. It cannot do anything perfectly by itself. There always is a better tool. A hammer is a better tool to hit with mm -hmm. than a pair of vice grips. A screwdriver is a better turner of screws than a pair of vice grips. But money is that common denominator that can do the job but not do it as well. I've learned to use the proper tool for the proper job. And, and money, uh, I haven't seen at any time uh, since I've been on this journey more money than is required to make it from day to day, as opposed to when my accountant used to describe me as a millionaire. I'd say, you know, words like that, that's, that's for you paper guys. <laughs> you, you, that's all on paper. 
Mm-hmm. I don't live on paper. I live in the world. And I deal with the world with the tools of the world. Mm-hmm. So when I was in sales, I used the knowledge of sales to help me sell. Now that I'm in the business of teaching, I use the tools of the philosopher to help me sell. The tools of a philosopher are language and words, books, chapters, paragraphs, sentences, but most of all, the bricks and mortar of a philosopher are syllables and phonetics. And since I understand that I must overstand, I don't try to build buildings from the 10th floor up. I always begin by the basement. Yeah. And from the basement, to bring it to the ground floor, I need attention and time on the part of the listener. It is a boon and a burden. It is a burden because most people won't give that time. It is a boon because those who do have been filtered out of the masses, shown to be able to grasp the concepts that this philosopher, sculptor, thinks about and tries to pass on. I remind people regularly that In a sculptor's life, it's not what you see that's important. That was always there in the original block. It was made by creation. The sculptor is, in fact, a garbage removal system that takes away those things that are hiding the real creation of the creator within a block of stone or rock or book. And that's all I do. Mm. I take the raw material, the unprocessed ore that people use as knowledge, and I clean it up. And I put it in context. And I try to match it with what is occurring in their lives that day so that they will see the relationship that exists between reality and the news that's being fed to them that's drawing them away from that reality. And you happen to be one of those few people who have the will and the patience. And on top of all of that, the time, since you're not 40 yet, and everything before 40 is gravy, it's bonus time. Anything you learn before 40 uh, is, is something to be treasured, because other people such as me, even in this rebirth, took to 47 before it all came together again. So not only do you benefit from all the years until you're 40, but you even would beat me by an extra seven. (laughs) I was into... an understanding and I needed to overstand. I think that's what my uh thing is. I understand I understand the basic I understand like that you know, there's a system and it's mechanized 
well oiled. You know, I understand. You know, I see all the control mechanisms. I see how they, you know, kill. It's like they kill off population to keep population down. They do all these things, and you know, I realize. But then there's, <laughs> I, I, I just like prehistory is like new to me. So, gotta get into that. The I, hints I, are yeah. there that you've been around more than once. Because it obviously is not possible to arrive at that point in one lifetime. Therefore, if you're, what, 25 now? Yeah, 25. If now at 25 you are grasping these concepts, it means there has to have been at least one or two before that have brought you past the 40 and back down to 25. So consider yourself lucky on the one hand, Mm -hmm. but on the other hand, remember that it's a burden. (laughs) Integrity is a burden. Mm -hmm. Integrity is saying you're prepared for future knowledge for future gains to give away opportunities for instant gratification. Jumping on bandwagons brings you instant gratification. Everybody can slap each other on the back and say, oh boy, how smart you are. Mm -hmm. But real knowledge requires time and effort. I suspect more than one lifetime's worth, and therefore, if you're there at 25 listening to this old 68-year-old, then there must have been some previous work done, and you're just living this new existence as a male, as a lame, as a whale, trying to absorb all of this, trying to digest Elan, that media that lies constantly by commission and omission. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you ever, when you were a politician, like, you, you've met, like, I guess these high masons, have you ever met them? Like, in... Not in the sense that I would meet them today. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know secret societies exist. Mm-hmm. You know people are high ranking. You know that hypocrisy is their bag. You just don't know the level at which they play. You got to remember that this is like in in the police they they have uh, an early response team. The early response team is based upon the person's abilities. So you can have a corporal giving orders to a captain because the task that they're responding to has found its talent in the corporal. So there is no rank. And in the same way, in secret societies, you can find that someone who is a prime minister or president on the outside is taking orders from a plumber because the job at hand is plumbing. So these, when you, so have you ever been like approached, like they say, hey, hey, Glenn, hey, just coming to the fold. You, you, you know what's going on. The closest thing that I could consider an approach mm-hmm. was when a doctor that I knew in British Columbia said to me, Glenn, you have all it takes, but the way you're handling it, you're going to be poor and you're going to be alone. 
come to Jesus and you will find followers and all the money that you need. And I said, Dr. LaFrance, I like being alone. (laughs) I like doing what I want to do. Having no money is no different from me poor as it was from me wealthy. (laughs) I didn't live my wealthy life around the wealth. I lived it around the work. If there was money there, it wasn't for me. It was for the work. It was a tool. So I am a millionaire from the day I'm born to the day I die. Just at some periods of my life, I happen to be a millionaire temporarily without funds. <laughs> and, and, and I don't mind. I guess I would mind if the, the temporarily without funds uh, extended to be a street person for the rest of my life, that would be uh, painful. But I would prefer that to being a prostitute. And a prostitute is the media. Mm-hmm. It's religion. It's the one hypocritic, hypocrite task on earth. Say one thing, do the opposite. Not for me. And if I were to be a street person, I would basically ask creation to take me back. Say, Now that I've spent some time being a street person, I've learned, observed, analyzed, and concluded that they are not the problem. You don't need to know much more than that about these people. Mm -hmm. What you need to know is who the people are creating the problem, what's their problem, and what can we do about it. And I won't find it among the poor, except by reverse mirror imaging their situation. My father used to tell me when I was young, if ever you grow up and want to be a millionaire, go and ask poor people what they do. Whatever it is they tell you they do, Mm -hmm. don't do it. (laughs) Because they're poor. (laughs) That's what brought it on is what they do. So I've always lived my life as a millionaire temporarily without funds. Even though some periods there were funds, they weren't for me. I didn't need it. All I needed was to be fed, a place to sleep, and the time to do my job. Yeah, I, I had a, I was having like almost like an argument, like last night. <laughs> this girl, she was just like, she's like, oh, it's money is power. You have to conform. I'm like, no, you don't. And she's like yelling at me. Over, I'm like, well, you know. That was her piggy yelling yeah. at you, not her. Yeah. yeah. That's what it was. And, and I would say stuff, like, you know, say I would say something, you know. She would just get so mad. And um, <laughs> and then, uh, and I'm just like, wow, what's, what's wrong with you? I, and, I, and I thought about, yeah, she just, the piggy in the back. <laughs> yeah, the piggy in the back wants to accumulate. Yeah. And you're not accumulating. (laughs) How can she hang around a person like you who doesn't want to accumulate? Yeah. (laughs) Because 
she gets to hold it until Piggy gets it. <laughs> oh man, you said um, there's a good alley. You said that they show that in like um, some police force that wear a, wears a hat that's a, a lid in the front and uh, a lid in the back or something yeah. like that to protect the Piggy. That's the detective. Arthur Conan Doyle wrote the story of Sherlock Holmes. She locks the home. She locks the home. And she provides protection for Piggy. That's why she has the flap at the back. She has protection for herself, but also takes the time to provide protection for the Piggy. The dummies in the world today are all walking around with baseball caps with the flap at the back. That means they don't give a shit about themselves. They only care about Piggy. <laughs> mm. huh. Wow. Maybe if we had, maybe if I had like enough money, I could start a project and just genetically engineer the <laughs> out of out of my bag. In any event, mm-hmm. it is time. For you to go. Yes. <laughs> All right. It's past sundown. Yeah, Long we... past sundown. Okay, we'll talk to you again. All right, I'll talk to you. Bye.